Hey, I'm Andre. I'm learning game development from zero. And in this devlog, I want to share with you the progress on my very first game prototype. I completed the course from GD Quest yesterday. So now I'm on my own. Coffee is ready. I can do this. But uh, where should I start? Uh, let's make a plan. I want to make a spaceship game. It could follow the cursor to navigate space. And there would be planets where the ship can land and maybe gather fuel and it can take off planets again. That's a very simple game loop I should be able to do. Next, I made a simple Trello where I dissected the game's mechanics into tiny bits. Basic movement, the fuel mechanic, landing on planets and refueling on planets. If I can do these, I will be happy. So let's see what happens. Okay, few hours in, the movement is working. The ship moves forward whenever a spacebar is pressed and it follows the cursor with a delay so the movement feels heavier. Plus there is a nice particle animation. Let's look at the code. Because my ability to write original code barely exists, so far I mostly remix and adjust pieces of code from elsewhere. The main thing we're highlighting here is the steering mechanism, which I also borrowed from one of the GD Quest lessons. It works like this. Every frame we move the ship for a small part of the difference between where it was going, its velocity, and the new position, the desired velocity, which in our case is the cursor. The outcome is a smoother, gradual movement. All right, the movement is done and it feels really nice actually, I'm surprised. Maybe I can actually finish this. Next, I'm going to add fuel to make the ship stop when it runs out. But first I'll take a lunch break and come back in a bit. Coffee almost gone, let's make some fuel. So I was thinking I will create a visual fuel bar next to the ship to see how much is left. So whenever the space bar is pressed, the fuel should go down. And I thought it would be funny to display a random phrase when the fuel runs out and the ship stops. Okay, this wasn't too hard. So the controls are the same as before, but now I have the fuel bar. As long as I'm pressing spacebar, it goes down and whenever I'm out, it doesn't move. And it will say something funny. So let's look at how it works. When I press the spacebar, I also check if the fuel variable is higher than zero. And if it is, I lower fuel by one. And if fuel and speed is both zero, I display the phrase which was empty until then. I made a cry function for this. How does it work? It sets the empty label to a random string from the cries array with a randy... Uh, I don't actually know how... Randy function generates a number between zero and very high. We divide this number by the size of the total number of phrases in the array and take the rest, which results in generating a random number in the size of the array. I hope that's how it works and I hope it makes sense. Okay, fuel is done. It's very basic. I can foresee some problems it might have in the future, but I want to keep moving rather than tinker with it. Let's continue. It's late afternoon now, so I switched from coffee to some delicious licorice tea. Let's make the ship land now. As a first step, I made a hacky version where I cheat actually. I use left click to allow take off after landing, but obviously I want to find a smarter way to do it. This is just for now to, to test how it works. After this, I got very stuck on making the signals work for some reason. Uh, so I talked to a friend who helped me untangle it. Thanks, Colin. Turns out landing was the easy part. The tricky part is taking off because I need to make sure the ship can only take off when pointing away from the planet. I'm not sure how to do that. But it's getting late now, so I'll take a break and take another stab at it tomorrow. Newsflash, I thought about a way how to do this and I think I could use a Raycast feature in Godot, which looks in the direction of the Raycast, it can check for collisions, I think. And I can have a can move variable or something like that and set it true or false based on whether I want to allow taking off or not. Th there should be some way to make this work, so let's investigate. Oh, 
Oof. This was the hardest part yet. Uh, took me hours and many experiments. But I made it. The, the Raycast works now. However, I was so excited that it worked that I forgot to film this part and went straight to working on the refueling. So let's enjoy a brief biking intermission and then I'll show you how it works. So there is a lot to be unpacked. Let's look at the most interesting parts. So now when I'm landed, I can only take off when the Raycast is pointing away from the planet. Refueling is on. So now when I land, the ship starts to get fuel every second while the planet loses the same amount from its reserves. And a fuel bar shows next to the planet only when the ship is there. Now the code. I cleaned it up into functions for clarity, setting speed, spending fuel, gaining fuel. I used signals to make the ship and planet communicate. Whenever the ship lands, it starts a timer that emits a timeout every second to drain fuel from the planet and gain the same amount for the ship. This is the planet's code where we listen for the ship's landing and then start draining fuel and also make the fuel bar visible. If you're curious about other things, in the description I'll share link to GitHub with the code. I actually finished this. Of course, it's a very simple game and my progress is slow. But hey, this is the very first mini game I was actually able to finish. So for me, it's huge actually. Also, I'm surprised this simple game loop is quite fun actually, so I'm eager to add more stuff in the upcoming days. Maybe new types of planets or mining the planets. I don't know yet. If you have an idea, let me know in the comments. Also, let me know your thoughts on this video. What's fun? What's boring? I appreciate any feedback. That's it for now. See you in the next video. Bye! No, there is a bug. F